the, a lot of the, the data warehouses that we have for prescription medications is, yeah, if they go through a PBM, uh, if they go through a large, um, uh, a large drugstore chain, we actually are able to track the number of prescriptions that are written for what drug by zip code. And so that's where we get some of this information from when we start tracking it according to areas of the country or areas within the metropolitan New York area. So the, um, this is probably one of the latest sources that we have as far as what drugs are being used. I we really don't see too much of a change in the, probably since we've been looking at this. At, at, you know, I've been on the state board now for three years, so over the course of the last three years, these particular drugs of choice, if you will, haven't really changed much, but this is the, the latest data that I could find. Um, marijuana and, and hashish is, uh, is number one at almost 35%. Um, and this, is, this is, is very, you know, kind of interesting because, you know, compared to when I grew up, now with that I grew up in a very, very small town with a very, you know, I'll say strict father. Um, but, you know, marijuana is not really considered to be a big deal anymore. There, we, anybody who's, uh, you know, as if you've been tracking the, the legislative uh, pushes across the country that actually legalize marijuana, you can see that it really doesn't have the stigma that it used to have, that it's, it's, it's no big deal for, for people to smoke marijuana. Um, one, of the, one of the biggest differences that I am aware of is the marijuana that they are using today is much different uh, than the marijuana that I grew up with as a teenager. Um, it's much more potent. It's, it's, it's cut with a lot of other different drugs, and so it's not the same um, it's, it's not the same. It's a, it's a much more intense, uh, much more intense uh, recreational drug uh, than it used to be. But our number two drug of choice amongst um, the people who were surveyed in this, uh, 12th graders, is Vicodin. Okay, now again, why anybody would really choose to take Vicodin? It's 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 um, again, anytime I've, I've taken, I actually have had side effects, and it makes me sick to my stomach, and it makes me really, really kind of drowsy. But um, Vicodin is right up there. Um, amphetamines. Okay, now amphetamines are actually taken not just for the high that they give, but there is a subset of teens who are using those for uh, performance enhancement. Okay, so they're using it because they need to study. Um, uh, they need to stay awake to be able to study. They need to be able to perform the, you know, the, the task of being a teenager in the year 2011 with all the extracurricular activities that they have. They're probably not getting home until nine o'clock at night. Then they have four, four, you know, four or five hours of studying to do, and then they're back up in the morning um, at six o'clock. Uh, and so they're using it to, uh, to try to, to get an edge and to maintain a level of, of performance that, unfortunately, once you try to take away that amphetamine, you cannot maintain. Uh, then my favorite cough medicine, Again, these are cough medicines. Most cough medicines have some kind of a combination of drugs in them. So they have an antihistamine. Uh, they have a um, um, a drug uh, uh, a drug uh, dextra uh, dextromorphine, which is actually um, chemically very very similar uh, to codeine. Um, and so that's actually used to help uh, decrease the amount of uh, the, the productive cough that you have. But actually, if you can take it in doses that are high enough, you can actually get some kind of a high from it. Uh, but throwing a, a base of alcohol, and that's where the cough medicine comes in. Mike will I'll actually talk about this later, but yeah, anybody, anybody have any idea that the percentage of alcohol that's in regular NyQuil? Huh? 25 percent. 25 percent. That's more than beer. That's more than wine. Okay. Of course, it, it, again, the, the taste is not exactly you know wonderful, um, and I can't imagine. Just kind of relaxing with a glass of Michael, but that the, the stuffy head, stuffy head aching fever, so you can rest medicine, and so you can rest part is the alcohol. <laughs> you throw that in with a little bit of Benadryl, and you're good to go. You're just, you know, it's going to knock right out. So again, 25% alcohol, and there is no age restriction. Anybody can buy Michael over the counter. And, and, yeah. and, and just to comment on the cough medicine, the dextromethorphan at high doses actually becomes a dissociative anesthetic. Uh, and there's a term for it, which is actually called, um, and it's about 300 milligrams of dexamethorphan really gets you into this state. So uh, people are doing interesting things with the uh, yeah. So if we move on down the list, we have Adderall, which kind of would maybe fall into the, the, the amphetamine type of category, tranquilizers, hallucinogens, um, and then salvia. Does anybody know what salvia is? I actually did a little research on it when I saw that because I wasn't really sure what it is. And I actually asked a couple of people in my office and I said, you know, have you guys heard of Selfie? And they're like, yeah, it's that new sweetener that's out. Uh, 
Um, and actually, it's because that, that now would be Truvia um, uh, from the Stavia plant. Um, but brain means OxyContin again shows up, um, sedatives, ecstasy, inhalants. You know, inhalants were big probably in the, uh, in the 80s. Uh, inhalants were big. They've you know, taken a, a, a backseat to, to, to prescription medication. Uh, and then cocaine and Ritalin. So salvia is actually an herbal plant. It's a member of the mint and sage family. And uh, they're not using it to make a lovely brown butter sauce with your butternut squash ravioli. They are um, either smoking it or snorting it or you know, Lord knows doing what else to it. But you, if you actually Google salvia on the internet, you can actually find these different types of, um, of herbal products that you can that you can buy over the internet. About 10, 10 to 15 bucks a gram. Um, so it's, it's not cheap. Uh, and then the, the quote I love is, our products have been personally vetted by us to ensure, I love it, personally vetted by us, okay? What a great job that would be. Um, to ensure that only the highest quality product is made available to you, our herbal highs and salvia are 100% guaranteed to get you hot. That was right off the end. I mean, I don't know if it is, I guess it would be a money back guarantee, I'm not sure. <laughs> Can I ask one question? Sure. These new bath salts that they talk about, right. what that fall under right. in, that, in those categories? Um, it's 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 in none of those categories. Oh, okay. it, it's in a category amongst itself, um, I guess you would say. And it's okay. and they're and they're called bath salts mainly, I think, because of the of the base that they're in. Right. Um, but again, they they weren't normally made to be um, melted and injected or snorted or crushed or what else they're they're actually doing with them. I don't know if you want that's, to. that's actually a very good question, actually. So it means that um, the, the the data when they did the survey. Um, the, uh, the, the bath salts weren't on the radar, but very quickly, um, the bath salts actually is from a um, very odd chemical um, which um, has been around for a very long time and um, it's been resurrected. And um, you also have something that's not up here, by the way, which is actually the K2. Um, K2, um, no, it's actually not ketamine. K2 is... Um, uh, synthetic um, no. marijuana. Uh, it's, it's not. It's not marinol, right? But, um, but um, interesting enough, it binds to the uh, receptors that uh, hook on to um, the cannabinoids much more tightly. So it's actually a much more dangerous form of um, of uh, THC. So, so uh, they're using the uh, K twos and the bath salts, and um, what you see in the emergency room department are kids with very high fevers, um, they're tacking along, mm -hmm. and they're delirious, and they're psychotic, and so um, the, the local hospitals here should be really getting their pulse on it to make sure that uh, we're not missing um, bath salts and K2 on standard. Is that the potpourri that K2? Is that, yeah. I that's exactly that. right. I correct. work in adolescence, so I can't. Yeah, yes, sometimes. correct, yeah, yeah, correct. Is that the okay. potpourri? Right. They call it potpourri. And they smoke it, I think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's one that, that's, that's new. That's yeah, interesting. They're, 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 the, the states are making it illegal uh, along the way, but they're just coming out with new compounds, and so you have to. Yeah, they keep changing. We, we, no, no matter what we try to legislate, we'll never be able to keep up with the ingenuity of, uh, of people who want to, you know, want to, you know, OxyContin. Uh, OxyContin is a very, very helpful drug for the treatment of chronic pain. It was formulated in a way where the people who were, who were taking it the way it was meant to be taken, which was just swallowed whole, not crushed or, or cut in half. Um, it would not give you a high. It was, it was, it was pretty much main, kept to keep you at a very, very even level. Um, which, when you, in treatment of, of again chronic pain, is something that you want. You want to be able to treat pain and not have people dopey or um, or, or or have any of, the, of, of those types of, of adverse events. Um, I'm not sure that people when they were when the, the people at Purdue Pharma were putting that you know making that um, doing the studies and making that drug available that they thought that somebody would actually crush it you know, heat it, melt it, snort it, and inject it. That's, that's probably not how you, you thought about it. They have actually reformulated the product so that it's much more difficult to crush. But again, if you actually have a hammer available, you can crush it and, um, 
and get it into the, uh, an appropriate powder format.